We offer curated collections of Montessori-inspired wooden toys specific to a child's age and development. Families return their collection of toys in exchange for a more challenging set of toys. This keeps your home free of toy clutter, toys out of the landfill, and it keeps your child engaged as they continue to learn and grow. 12 to 15 month toys. Enter the Cross Canada Toy Exchange Club. They are different. You know what? These are not toys that I would typically think to go out and buy. Non-toxic, non-plastic, educational toys that parents don't need to purchase or store or throw in the trash when their child is ready for the next thing. I love the idea of not having to figure out what toys were age appropriate for my son. Two business partners with the same first name who met while working together at the Jane Goodall Institute of Canada, now combining their passions for motherhood and environmental issues. Through my research, I found out that 90% of toys are plastic and 80% of those are headed for the landfill. So that didn't sit right with me. We actually estimate that every family that subscribes to the toy rental service is saving about 50 pounds of waste from the landfill. There's a monkey and a lion. Toy Exchange Club is geared to newborns through to three-year-olds. So we have curated a set of toys. They receive seven to eight toys in a box that have been specifically selected and vetted by a psychologist who specializes in early childhood development. That box is shipped right to your door. There's no clutter. Good job, Stella! Yeah! Welcome to the Upcycle Canada podcast. I'm Jennifer, and together with my husband, Dave, we started with an idea, worked on it as a side hustle, and grew it into our, our first eco-friendly store. At Upcycle Canada, we repurpose, refinish, and reuse discarded items, giving them new life. Sit in on the conversation as we continue to grow from a small side hustle into something much more. Special guests will drop by and share their journey with you as well. This is the most eco-friendly small business podcast in your favorites. This is Upcycle Canada, where yesterday's items are reborn. Let's do this. Okay, welcome to the Upcycle Canada podcast podcast but we're, right. we're here together oh my goodness jennifer that's right we're here together <laughs> dave jen jen dave and we yeah, have a guest we look we at the do. screen I can know. you see that it's there's wonderful. someone sitting there surrounded by toys it's awesome it's like it's like santa's little village that's going right. on behind her there do you see that it's toys galore welcome to the podcast part owner part creator Mostly amazing, we would say. <laughs> yes. yes, for Toy Exchange Dossier. Our guest today is with us, Carissa. Welcome to the podcast. Nice to have you here. Well, thank you for having me. Very excited to be here. Well, this is so kind of you to take time out of your day. Um, I know you've had a busy day playing with toys, <laughs> and that sounds like heaven for me. But uh, can you tell us a little bit about? you and where you are in the world. Let's start with that. Sure. So um, I'm a mom. I have two children, one, uh, a son who's four and a half and a, a little girl who's 18 months. Oh, sorry. No, 20 months. Um, and we live out in Aurora, Ontario. Um, and uh, after taking a few years off of uh, doing, well, a few years off of work, I decided to join one of my very dear friends who is actually also named Carissa to uh, <laughs> run a company called the Toy Exchange Club. So was it mandatory that the two of you work together being both Carissa's? Like <laughs> there seems to be something going, some collusion going on there. Right. It's kismet. It's absolutely kismet. Um, but also confusing, very confusing. So we met about 10 years ago. We actually met working at the Jane Goodall Institute and she was already working there when I started and she was one of my employees, I guess she was on my team. And the first day I started working there, I was introduced as Carissa and she, uh, she was introduced as Carissa and I think it was fate. That's amazing. Okay, so yeah. can you take us behind the scenes? Um, I'm seeing you guys everywhere, by the way, on the news, oh, and it's so exciting. When when you when we the first time we saw 
the spot for you guys and what you're doing came up on the like the 11, 11 o'clock news. And while it was on, we were searching yeah. you up to find you so we could connect with you because the whole idea of what you're doing, we're going to get into this, really resonated with us and with our podcast and with our community. And we really wanted to get you on to share this because we're all about the eco-friendly side of do, coming up with solutions for families and reduce waste. And the things you guys are doing really caught our attention. And we, we just wanted to come on and promote and celebrate all the great things that you're doing. So take us to the early days of Toy Exchange and kind of help us to, to ramp up to where we are today. How did all this start? Great. Um, yeah, well, first of all, I mean, I'm so grateful that you saw us and that you reached out. Um, it's always so fabulous to connect with other, you know, like-minded hosts of podcasts, but also audiences who are choosing to kind of say no to the way that we are, I guess, now expected to live. Um, I won't go too, <laughs> too further down that road, but um, we're just I'm really grateful that, that you guys reached out and we're able to be here. To, well, I'm able to be here to speak. Um, it's really unfortunate my, my, that other Carissa isn't here because I am going to 100% give kudos to her. She is really the brains behind the Toy Exchange Club. Um, we, while we've been really good friends since we worked together, started working together 10 years ago, and we both left the Jane Goodall Institute, we've remained friends. Uh, and we happened to have our first child around the same time. And we were sharing a lot of the concerns that we were both having around, um, the amount, a, the amount of plastic that was being brought into our homes with our children, um, you know, that was, I think, the, the greatest impetus for the other, Carissa B. starting the company. She, um, you know, really took notice of the the toys that her son were, was putting in his mouth, noticing most of them were plastic, searching the recycling signs and realizing that none of them were recyclable and that they were probably full of uh, toxins and chemicals that we don't want in babies' mouths. So she really dug in and started doing a lot of research around um, sustainably made and non-toxic toys. And that really led her down to the path of thinking about, well, so she started researching toys and realizing that some of the best learning toys are toys that are needed for a very short amount of time because they're very skill specific. And as we all know, children <laughs> grow exponentially in those first few years and they very rapidly develop skills. And so a toy that's a, a huge challenge to them at six months is no longer going to be of interest to them at eight months because they should have mastered the skills that that toy was designed for them to master and move on. So that led Carissa to start thinking about, well, I also don't want, if I'm going to be collecting these sustainably made toys for my son that are designed for very specific skill development. I don't want them sitting in my home collecting after I'm done using them. And that started to get her thinking about um, alternative models for uh, toy acquisition use and I guess letting go. And that's what kind of brought her to create the model for the toy exchange club at the time I was um my son I think by the time that this this model had really kind of come to be ready to be piloted my son was about four months or sorry eight months old and I was as a parent very concerned about my child's development. I wanted to make sure that the toys that he was playing with were not simply just there to entertain and distract him, but there to foster and nurture his development. Um, but I was also incredibly anxious as an environmentalist. I was also, also incredibly anxious about climate change and 
was really trying to avoid the use of plastics, um, the use, like waste, um, you know, all of those elements that uh, are components of cont- contributors to climate change. Um, and so when she, we started really kind of talking about this model, she asked if my family would be one of the early piloters and I actually jumped on it. And so my first son mm-hmm. was one of the first families to subscribe to the service uh, because Chris and I are really good friends. We'd have a lot of late night calls about the business model. I'd offer, you know, you know, just jam about the business and problem solve at, um, and then over the course of, you know, after three years, you know, my second child was using the toys and, and finally Carissa, you know, said to me, why don't you just come on and, and work with me? And I felt like I was finally at a time to kind of go back into the workforce and, and, uh, so decided to join her on this journey. And I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful that she, um, asked me to, I, I think that I, I believe in this so wholeheartedly as, as a parent and as someone concerned about the environment, um, as someone concerned about parent mental health, um, as about, you know, conscious parenting, mindful parenting, all of those things. Um, I just, I'm not sure that there could be another model that I would, would support this wholeheartedly. And also my business partner is amazing. It's so great to, as you guys know, get to work with someone that you really admire and respect and just love to hang out with. So it's been a really, <laughs> it's been great. I, I, I don't know about the admire and respect sometimes. I, sometimes I'm not that admirable okay. i guess admirable. Admirable? admirable admirable yeah let's say that <laughs> uh but yeah no that's yeah exactly I, I like the fact too that originally she was working for you and now you in mm-hmm. sense are now working for yeah. her in this in this way it's kind of this back and forth that's kind of an interesting dynamic as well for the two of you to have known each other for so long and again to be both have the same name is convenient yeah. because you know it's almost like you're talking to yourself i guess um so that's great uh so you have some toys behind you yeah. and for those that are enjoying this on the video side for the audio people you're gonna have to take our word for it that these are amazing <laughs> but for those watching on video can you show us a couple examples of some of the toys that you got with you tonight sure so these, um, so my daughter, I'm just going to, I might move the camera a little bit um, just to get the full range. So my daughter is, as I said, 20 months. And so the way that our toy subscription service works is they're on three month cycles. So a families receive a box of toys for three months. Those toys have been, you receive about seven toys. They've been curated specifically for the age and development level of the child The families play with the toys, use the toys for three months. At the end of those three months, your child should be ready to move on to more challenging toys. So you, the families return the toys and receive a new box of toys that are more challenging. Um, My daughter, as I mentioned, is 20 months old. So she right now, these are the toys that we use and they belong to the 18 to 21 month box. Um, And so... Um, I'll just pull a couple of them out. Um, this is one that she's actually still struggling with, but as you can see, it's like a threading, um, a threading toy, really focusing the mi- fine motor skills. Um, mm-hmm. And so really I'm using one hand because I have to hold, I'm holding this up so you can see it. Um, she really, she, this is, toy has been a struggle for her since she received it. She's just getting to the point where it's easy for her to put the small um the smaller pieces on the big ones are a bit more challenging. Um, but you know, we also use this to talk about, um, this has, I'm not sure if you can see, but it's got, um, a little barn and then a mother cow and a baby cow and a little milk carton. And so, you know, we also use this as an opportunity to talk about animals, what sounds the animals make the mother, baby, the baby, or the mother cow, the baby cow, and that they produce the milk that we drink. So, What's great about these toys is um, they're often created for like specific skill development around um, 
like fine motor skills or track, like tracking motion, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them are, they're really beautiful and they can really be used for um, vocabulary development and other learning tools or, you know, other learning opportunities. So this is one of the toys that we've got. Um, Yeah. This piece is you can't really see, but it's got, it looks like a jigsaw puzzle. Um, but these are just pieces that go on and the children have to figure out how to move them around to get them down the peg. Um, and this has four different uh, pieces to it, actually. I've got my box here. So, you know, once they've mastered this stage, they might move on to a circle peg or, uh, you know, the triangle peg. That's one of the toys. Um this is a very beautiful, this is, we love this, the design of this, but um, this is all around like, you know, tracking, um, <laughs> yeah. tracking motion. Um, I think I need really that toy for me. <laughs> I, I, want, I want that toy. Yeah. I like it too. <laughs> I would play with that. <laughs> And the wood, the wood toys make such beautiful sounds when they're played right? with. There's something yeah. Yeah. really beautiful about the, the clinking right. sounds of wood toys. Um, this is like a matching game um, that you can do. And again, this is also, this one's all based on farm animals. I guess that's kind of a theme in this box. But, um, you know, you can talk about animal sounds, but it's this is really about teaching them how to match items. Um, shape sorters is obviously something that's, you know, that uh, children do at this age. So those are just some of the toys that we've got in this box. There's, you know, we also have a puzzle here for shapes. Um, yeah. Very nice. That's great. One thing I noticed, um, that because every three months you say that um, you guys will, the customers can return. Um, and then you'll send them a new box, but you even remind them, Hey, you know, it's time, you know, that's kind of cool. Cause it'd be easy to forget when you're busy just doing stuff. You're like, Oh my goodness, it's already time to, to move on to the next thing. So that's pretty neat that you guys make that reminder to the customer, uh, on yeah. their, on your, like for them. That's pretty neat. So. Yeah. We have oh, a like very that. lovely lady, um, on our team, um, named Ashley and she's the one who reaches out to people to let them know that their next box is ready. We also um, provide people. So your toys come in a box like this. It's not the most beautiful box, but we reuse them as much as we can. Um, and in the box, we actually also send you your shipping label to return the toys as well as um, your packing tape. So it's super easy. Your toys just go back in the box they came. You wet this and, you know, lock it down and you put the stamp on it and (laughs) mail it back to us. That's great. You've already thought of that part too. Now, okay, what about, what if my my son or my daughter really gravitates to a toy and they're like totally into this toy? Yes, they've gone past the level of understanding and using it. But they love this toy, Chris, and they don't want to send it back. Is there options for me as a parent for toys that my kids fall in love with? Absolutely. We're willing to work with families um, to if there's toys that, uh, that their child is attached to. You know, one thing that we will say when somebody, when someone says that to us, one thing that we'll say is that, um, You'll be surprised that they do, they might still love it now, but they will probably quickly fall, fall out of love with it because they, Mm. they, they will naturally just get bored of it. But, um, we're certainly willing if we're certainly willing to work with families, if we all know how kids can be, (laughs) there's just that one toy that the kid's not ready to let go of. We're absolutely willing to work with family around that. (laughs) I have several of those toys around here that I still have. That I will not get rid of, Carissa. So I'm I'm asking more for myself, I think, than for anyone else. Um, so is there is there an overlap between the toys that I get in my first round and my second round? Or is there a gap where I have no toys for my child as I'm waiting for my next 
box to come in. No, we, so we let you know that your next box is coming. We wait for confirmation from you that you're ready to receive your next box. Sorry, next box. Uh, We ship our, on our end, we ship the box to you. And then once you receive that box, you have five days to ship your toys back. So you're never without toys. Great. Um, One question I wondered about was for cleaning the toys to... Do they need to take care of, like, obviously they would clean them while the family has the toys, but is that something they need to prep prior to sending them back or anything like that? That's a very good question. It's a question we're often asked, um, especially when we were in business working during the time of COVID. Um, there's nothing that uh, a family needs to do in terms of, of cleaning the toys. We actually encourage families not to clean the toys because they're wooden they are sensitive to cleaners and um, and too much water. So we have a process that's been standardized that we use in our warehouse. And so we just would prefer if families just put the toys back in the box as is and our, our team will handle the sanitization of the toys. That's great to know. Well, when you said warehouse thing, I work in a warehouse. So I'm curious, are you just sort of like an, a little business inside someone else's company? Or do you have your own sort of place that you could say is yours as a warehouse? Um, do you share the, the building? Or? So yes, we have a we have a space within a building. So we are we're renting a unit within a um, it's a it's like a, a kind of collective, um, a lot of artists actually are in the building in uh, Kitchener and um, are, I will say it's not a um, heavily mechanized process for cleaning the toys. It's pretty like human driven at this, at this point, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, yeah. So we are a shared space within a, within a larger building. It's amazing. So let's talk a little bit about how this is an eco-friendly alternative to throwaway toys that are popular at Christmas. They come in all this big packaging. All the packaging is garbage. All the packaging is waste. The toys turn out to be flimsy. They break two days after Christmas, and now they just end up in the landfill. I think I saw a stat that you said that using your service saves the equivalent of some amount of weight of garbage that would go to the landfill had they not used your service. Can you talk a little bit about how this is such a great alternative to our disposable society where things just get played with once or twice, broken and thrown away? How is this going to solve that or make an impact Mm -hmm. on it? Yeah. um, So there's kind of two elements to that question. And the first one Yes, we absolutely have a statistic that we calculate out. We estimate that um, per family that subscribes to the service is saving about 50 pounds of waste from the landfill. That is simply around packaging. So um, we receive the toys uh, at, you know, the warehouse in packaging. That's kind of the last time that those toys are in packaging. So when we send our toys, we, all of our toys come in these um, upcycled fabric bags. So we, as we ship them, they're, they're in the, and these are, you know, um, I, 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 the details on this are skipping my brain right now, but we have someone that we know Uh that this, we specifically source that upcycles the cloth for these bags. Um, the, the boxes are the boxes are reused. So, you know, just in the toy packaging alone, that's the waste that we're calculating that we're saving from the landfills. The other wow. element, the other piece of our um, eco-friendly side of things is that the toy industry is a $22 billion industry. 90% of those toys are plastic. That plastic is not recyclable. So, and 80% of that plastic ends up inevitably in our oceans, our landfills, or incinerators. So, A, 
we are not sourcing plastic toys where we purchase toys with the intent of them being wooden and sustainably made. The other piece of that is that we are extending the life cycle of the toy. So it's not just being used once, but we estimate that every toy that we use is used three, no, sorry, eight times. So eight families will use that toy. At the end of that life, um, Right now, we have a partnership with the Guelph Library where they purchase our toys that are kind of at the end of their life for the Toy Exchange Club, and they purchase those toys for use in their their, li- their the library there. Um, we're, as a part of our growth model, we're going to be looking at a other partnerships that will ensure that the toys are continued to be used, and B, um, what does it look like at the actual end of the life of the toy? Um, the challenge that we face is that the toys do have coloring on them. Um, and so they're not, it's not like we can just put them in a wood chipper and, and use them as compost or, you know, mm-hmm. they have to. Um, so one thing that we're really wanting to do as we grow and build is, is, you know, whether it's develop industry partners or, um, you know, just figure out unique, innovative ways that the toys can have an end of life that's, that's returning to the land in a way that's not polluting the land. So that's definitely it's nice. high on them. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I think that that really is a good full circle thought pattern all the way through the life cycle of the toy. That's that's great. I love love hearing that you have that in the in the works. What has been the hardest thing for the two Carissas to to get going or to push the business forward? What have been some of the early struggles in the early days? And maybe maybe something that's developed over time that's become a solution for you for some of those early struggles. How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> as much as you want. <laughs> uh, um, and this really, like, and I, I, like, I don't even know all of the struggles because it hasn't been me alone doing this. It's really been Carissa figuring it out. Um, we have all the struggles. This is a really, first of all, it's a unique business model. The two-way logistics is, you know, surprisingly, at the beginning, we did not know that that was going to be such a big problem, but it is um, just from like a cost perspective. Um, inventory, calculating inventory when you have a model that's a rental service, um, predicting what inventory you're going to need based on um, like it's not like clothing rental where you just need a bunch of sizes for one shirt. This is because it's developmentally and age specific. There's cycles that a family goes through moving from, from like tier to tier to tier to tier of age. So understanding the inventory model around that is, is a challenge. Um, the tech piece is a, is a challenge. There's, there are no platforms right now that make it really easy for us to do the two way shipping plus our inventory. Um, we're a social impact business uh, and we're a startup. So looking for um, investors, when you have a social purpose startup, you're, you're different than most startups that are out there. You've got concerns like, well, our priority is obviously to have a profitable business. Uh, we have a lot of other uh, environmental and social concerns that, um, take up the bandwidth of the business and factor into our costs. Um, So it's not your typical uh, startup when you're, when you're talking to investors, there's all these considerations to have. Um, And just like being a a startup with a small team, limited funds uh, and um, uh, like a, um, a vision, like, there's there's real change we want to create. Uh, And it's super motivating. 
uh, but it's hard when you, when you've got such a small team and you've got such a big vision. Um, Chris and I, again, we, like we met in the nonprofit sector. Both of us actually spent most of our life in the nonprofit sector. This is the first time, um, like I, I've done consulting for businesses, but I've never necessarily worked in a, the private sector itself. So it's, it's funny how much we, we say, uh, running a startup like this is akin to working in the nonprofit sector and just your, the limited resources that you've got. Um, but the difference in being in the nonprofit sector is, is that you, the, the long-term model is, is, is hoping that you're going to be able to, you know, pay your staff well, um, and do some really cool things. So it's, there's, there's been a lots of challenges, but I would say that we've got a lot of, um, grit and determination and the, the, the challenges, like I'm coming in late and I'm just going to boast the heck out of my partner because she, I just can't believe what she has overcome in terms of figuring out solutions that, that she has, the, the, every problem has come at her and she has figured out every solution and um, she's been very savvy at it. And I wish she was here to speak more, more coherently currently on specific um issues that she's overcome but i mean she's 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 got grit and determination that girl she's resilient so can you tell walk us through i'm a new new customer i'm coming to the website i'm ready to sign up can you kind of walk us through just the initial setup on how this all works so that when i come to the website i have some knowledge cuz coming the first time i might not know I might have lots of questions, so I'm here with the expert. So can you help kind of guide us through the beginning stages of getting set up as a customer? Sure. So when you land on our website, um, so we're going through some changes on it right now. So what I would uh, say to any listeners right now is you're going to look for the tab that just says toy subscriptions. And I would click on that. And it is going to take you to a page that outlines, that shows images and details for every box of toys that we've got. So you'll click on it, monthly subscriptions, you'll see the zero to three month, three to six months, six to nine month boxes, so on up until 36 months. Um, If you're purchasing a box, you're going to Think about the age of the child that you're purchasing for, whether it's your own or you're giving it as a gift. You're going to click on that kit, and then that's going to take you to a page where you can choose to either buy the, uh, a one-time subscription, which is for three months. That's the minimum time, and you're billed monthly for that. So it'll say, yeah, and then, or you can choose an annual subscription, and then you can choose which subscription you want. And then it should take you through the rest of the process. If you've got questions, our um, FAQ page really kind of goes through all of the nuanced questions that people ask for us. We get a lot of questions like around toy cleaning, around keeping the toys, the two of the questions that you've already asked here. If um, toys are um, broken or damaged, I have two dogs, one of who is still a puppy. Mm-hmm. Um I can show you some toys here that pieces have been chewed <laughs> from. Um, so that we get we get lots of like real life questions like that. Like, what does this look like in my house? Um, how do I how do I return the toys? What do I do if they're damaged? What do I do if you know? Um, so the FAQ page is a really good place to go if you've got some additional questions that aren't answered on the website. Good. I'm actually on the website as we chat, um, so that's why I'm kind of following along with you, and I mm-hmm. hope people are doing the same. I see even spot here for clearance wooden toys. So that was interesting. Yes. Um, so yeah, there's a chance to actually purchase toys. I might give you this as my list. There's some things I like on here. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I might have Christmas solved this year just by going to the website. Um, so that's a good thing. I saw a stacking um, lighthouse caught my eye. I might put that, that, that on my cool. list. I might put that on my list. Um, so that's great. Um, I don't want to keep you much longer. Just tell me a little bit about, like, you could be working in any sector or doing anything based on your your background and and all the great things you've done in the past. 
you've you've talked about this already, how this really this business really aligns with you and, and who you are as a person. But what keeps you coming back for this? What keeps you coming back to, to Toy Exchange Club? What is it, if you could boil it down for the people listening or watching, why is this so important to you? Oh my gosh, Dave, that is such a good question. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, so most of my life, I've, uh, I like, I, I've, you know, since I was 13, I've worked on social justice and environmental issues in a variety of capacities. Um, and most of it, and then in my adult professional life, most of it was an international development. Um, so a lot of my work was overseas. Um, and at one point, I came to the realization that well, not at, not at one point. I guess over the course of my career, I really thought about neocolonialism and the role that um, the West plays in imposing uh, Western models of development in quote unquote developing countries. And so a long time ago, I decided to yes. take a step back from that work and kind of reevaluate the role I was playing in that and how I wanted to really affect change in the world. Um, through my, uh, reflections and, and, and possibly through becoming a parent, I really became fixated, I guess, on the idea that change is only going to truly take root when we make better consumer decisions. And, um, in the West that we live lives that are sustainable and uh, take into account the greater impact of the, the choices that we make. So um, it's no longer about fixing other people's problems. There's a lot of very confident, brilliant people all over the world who are affecting change in their own communities in ways that make sense for them. I don't need to be uh, uh, flying overseas and, and imposing that. And that's not against anyone who's doing that work. I think that there's a lot of organizations that are doing really fantastic and needed work. This is just in reflection of, of, of my life and where, um, I had kind of come to in, in reflection on my life. Um, and so decided that the role I wanted to really play was affecting change through, um, that. So, it took me a really long time. I took time off. Um, when I had my first son, I was still, um, I was still working. I was doing actually consulting for, um, private companies who wanted to start to think about social purpose and how they can engage their employees. Um, and then I, you know, I just realized I really want to just take time and space and be at home with my son. And I guess that's when the thinking really, you know, started ruminating and, and this, you know, Chris and I were talking about this business and it just really fell in line with the, the idea that I, our family, we are dedicated, pretty dedicated to the environment. We, we fail in some areas, but we try our best. Um, we try to live quite conscientiously and with intent. And if I could um, help other families do that with ease, that's something that I, I think is really, really important to create meaningful change. I really hope with uh, the Toy Exchange Club that we help families just rethink consumerism in general. Um, I think Chris and I both hope that families think about renting not just their toys, but other items that they need in the home, baby equipment, um, formal wear, um, furniture, you know, whatever it is, but they just start thinking with a little bit more intent about their consumer decisions. So we really, I think we both really hope that there is such a ripple effect that happens as a result of this. Um, and we know that the parents who are choosing Toy Exchange Club are choosing it because they're value-based individuals. And um, we want to help them raise children who are also going to be change makers and, and, you know, stand up to the status quo and, and, and play their little part in making the world uh, more sustainable and healthier. And, um, you know, I think our long-term hope for Toy Exchange Club as we grow and build and, and add, you know, educational components to it um, is that we're going to also help parents facilitate that learning within their children. So I think 
that's why I, I really believe in Toy Exchange Club. I think that in itself, it's just creating a service and tool to families to help them live sustainably. But in the end, I also hope that there's a ripple effect that's really going to help change consumer behavior within families. I love it. So, Krista, if you ever want to expand the Toy Exchange Club and have like a dad section <laughs> for dad toys, I'm going to volunteer to be your test pilot. I will test any toy that you want me to try because I think for guys like children, um, I don't think we ever grow up. We, we don't really grow out of anything, but we get bored of things toy wise. Um, so if there's a way that we can kind of work that in, I don't know. I'm just an idea. I'm just spitballing here. Yeah. Um, but what I, I love, love I love it. I, what I love is Krista, this is a great gift that say grandma and grandpa want to give a gift to their kids, right? There's a newborn coming home. What do we give them? Um, hmm. We can go to a big box store and buy some stuff that's going to end up in the landfill. Or or we can go to this great new website. Grandma and Grandpa can get the subscription and get that for the kids, yeah. right? It's the gift that keeps on giving, Carissa. It just keeps coming. It keeps coming and coming and coming. It is. It's it a is. great gift Every idea. three months, the grandchildren right? will be like, whoa, Grandma and Grandpa sent us all their box of toys. They don't right? notice the old ones are gone yet. Nah, yeah. No. <laughs> I love it. It's a yeah, great idea, some... Carissa. Well, thanks. I will. Uh, I agree. I agree. A hundred percent. And we have lots of grandparents that, that purchase this for their kids or grandchildren. And we actually also have some grandparents that get it for their own home because grandparents are downsizing. They don't have space anymore. They, they've gotten rid of the kids' toys. Like a lot of grandparents have given up on holding on to the toys that their kids had. And uh, so we have some grandparents that have gotten the subscription for their home. It's a great idea. One other question before I let you go. Um, is there any geographic uh, uh, things about your, your service? Is it only in Canada? Who can, who can get this? So we are... Uh, Canada wide with the exclusion of the territories right now there's it's just um, within our model it's not possible um, the plan is to expand in the United States but that will come with a bit of wow. time but all Canada right now that excluding the territories but that's amazing so wow that's that's really really nice to see so for anyone listening here in Canada we do have a global audience so what I'm in, what I'm hoping Chris is that your message and the business inspires someone. Mm -hmm that could be listening to us in Australia going, I need to talk to Carissa. So you might get a phone call or some contacts from people elsewhere that want to follow the model, you know, so mm -hmm. you'd be open to speaking to people that way as well, right? Yeah, we're very open. We're very open people. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. It's a great model, Carissa. And I thank you so much for yes. taking time, showing us the toys. Mm -hmm. I've picked out some things for Christmas already <laughs> on the website. So it's a bit of a big win-win all the way around. And, um, you know, the dogs have been well-behaved yes. in the background. Um, so we've had a, it's been a great conversation. We've done, they, everyone has been so well-behaved, including myself. So thank you for being part of the podcast. Uh, John, yes. what do you think? I, it's been great. It was nice to do this together. I appreciate it. It's just, it's a wonderful concept. Um, just exciting to see. I mean, I almost wish my kids were, <laughs> were younger again to have this opportunity <laughs> to do for them. So yeah, there you go. I yep. like toys. <laughs> I like toys. Yes. So yes, there's potential grandkids, I suppose, in the future, right? You never know. You never that, know. That could be, we could just, just let us know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you. Krista, thank you so yeah. much for being part of the, Liv the Upcycle Canada podcast. Thank you for being here and sharing your message with our eco-friendly friends around the world that follow the podcast. Uh, we really appreciate you making time for us and for, for everyone. So thank you. Wishing you well, watching with great interest, all of the news stories, all of the things happening and cheering you on at the same time, just so you know. So you've got some, some big fans here. So keep going. Don't stop and uh, give our best to Chris as well. Okay. Thank you very much for having us. Very, very grateful. Awesome. awesome. All right, everybody, make sure you check the show notes for links to everything we talked about. Go there, 
and purchase and get some great toys for your kids. And uh, thank you, Chris, for being part of the podcast. Can you show everybody how you play with this one? As is the case with most toddlers, this excitement is often short-lived. It's something this mom wanted to plan ahead for. You get toys, your baby is interested in them for a while, and then, you know, inevitably they lose interest. And in a traditional model where you're buying, you're stuck with that clutter. Let's say that he loved this. Before her son was even born, she did some research online and came across the Toy Exchange Club. Basically, the idea is renting the toys instead of buying them. I was overwhelmed with the idea of how to play with my child. And I also did not want to have my living room overrun with plastic and toy clutter. So For the founders, the idea was born out of their experience being moms, not wanting clutter around the house, but also wanting to keep toys out of the landfill. So families receive a box of seven to eight toys for three months. They also receive with that box a, a guide on how to play with each toy and what development milestones your child should be reaching within that time period. At the end of the three months, families return the box in exchange for a new box of toys that are more challenging. The toys are Montessori inspired. Uh, they're all wooden. Um, they are curated specifically to support a child's age and developmental stage. I hope that we can sort of reframe the way that families think about toys and uh, the fact that toys are not we don't need to own them, especially in those early years. They're outgrown so quickly. As more people try to shop sustainably, the Toronto Environmental Alliance says businesses that focus on a sharing economy are becoming more popular. It's a trend that's happening in the clothing industry too. When it comes to things like toys or even clothing, being able to share or borrow or rent them instead of owning it yourself is a really great way that we can reduce waste, save money and reduce the environmental impact. Hey, should we put these ones in? Sonia hopes the idea inspires other parents to keep the planet in mind. My hope is really that more families and more parents understand that there are options and uh, you don't have to sacrifice what you want for your children um, just because you want to do it sustainably. Hi, my name is Carissa McLennan and I am the co-founder and CIO of Toy Exchange Club. We offer curated boxes of Montessori-inspired wooden toys that are age and development specific for years zero to three. Families receive seven toys to use for three months. At the end of those three months, families return the toys in return for a new set of more challenging toys. This keeps children engaged in learning, homes free of toy clutter, and toys out of the land. You can see our website at toyexchange.ca for more information and to subscribe to our services. This has been the Upcycle Canada podcast. Thanks for listening today. We appreciate your feedback and would love to connect with you. Email your questions, comments, or suggestions to upcyclecanadapodcast at gmail.com. To find out more about our business and access links to all our social media sites, podcast notes, and more, please visit upcyclecanada.ca. A review of this episode on the podcast app of your choice is always appreciated. Please help us build this community by sharing our podcast with your family and friends. Our thanks to Jacob Moon for the instrumental backing track used in this podcast. Please visit jacobmoon.com for more on this talented Canadian artist. Join us again for more great topics, ideas, and practical steps to help you in your daily life. Thank you for listening. Let's keep this conversation going. Hey, this is Dave. You're like, what's this music? I thought the podcast was over. Well, it is. This is actually an ad. Oh, you're like an ad. Hmm. But this is different. This is for another podcast called ready dad space dad space is a podcast created for dads by dads head over to dadspace.ca for all the information and we would love if you know a dad if you are a dad if you've ever had a dad if you know a new dad a 
current dad, an empty nest dad. We have a podcast just for dads. And I'd love to share with you and to share it with a special dad in your life, dadspace.ca. Thank you for listening to the podcast you've already been listening to. But if you want a little bit more podcasting greatness, check out dadspace.ca, dadspace.ca, for all the goodness for your favorite dad. Aww. It's like a Father's Day present every day. We'll see you over at dadspace.ca. Thanks for listening to all of our podcasts, and we'll talk soon. This is Dave, and I'll meet you at dadspace.ca. Cheers. And now we dance.